Hi guys, welcome back. In this video, I'll be discussing what it is like to be a consultant, how I found it, what my workload is like, and my general feelings about my transition from registrar to consultant life. I started this consultant job in March of 2022, and seven months later, I went on maternity leave. They're very lucky to have me. This was after five years of radiology training in a tertiary hospital and five months of um, fellowship as a GI research fellow. I currently work in what is classed as a district general hospital or a DGH, which is a medium-sized secondary care hospital. The hospital is based across two sites, which are half an hour apart. And although I work for the trust and I can technically work um, on both sides, I'm mainly based on the one site. Work-wise, whilst it's a DGH, it's quite a sizable DGH between both sites combined. We are also a cancer centre serving a large um, geographic area in the south of England and also a trauma centre. So the work volume is quite high. There can be quite a bit of a backlog like the rest of the NHS. But on the plus side, the work is very varied, which is a plus for me because I'm someone who likes a variety of things. And I found I like to have a bit of a challenge with my work. In terms of what my work week is like, it's not too dissimilar to what it was as a registrar. I work four days a week, three of these days I work on site and one day is a work from home day. My days mostly start at eight or half eight, mostly because my MDTs are very early in the morning. And on a couple of days, I will close at about 5.45 or 6 p.m. When I'm on call, which is one day every two weeks, then I'll stay on site until 8 p.m. Overnight, we outsource the reporting to a teleradiology company, so there is no overnight reporting for us. The work itself is a mixture of hot and cold reporting, MDT prep, um, presenting and ultrasound and interventions. Um, for those who might not be too used to the terminology, um, hot reporting basically re refers to acute scans from the a &E department or from the inpatient population, whereas cold reporting is um, more non-emergent stuff, so cancer staging scans, some routine follow-up scans, any GP requests that are not very urgent, and plain film reporting as well. I do two MDT Teas, which I normally do one um, on alternate weeks, but sometimes due to leaves or swaps, um, I end up doing both MDTs in one week, and those weeks are usually quite busy for me because that means a lot of prep beforehand. One thing I have actually done a lot of since my time as a registrar is the play from reporting session. Um, I might get an odd plate film to report if I'm doing a hot reporting session, usually um, an NG tube check um, x-ray, but I haven't actually done a proper plate from reporting session. And that's because the, um, um, the registrars tend to do them because they have to meet certain number targets per year. And also we have reports and radiographers who tend to mock up the rest of the plate films then. Honestly, when I first started, it felt like I was dropped in the deep end of the ocean. It was definitely a whirlwind. And although I was already doing some things independently as a registrar, there was little anxiety surrounding the things that I was doing because that list always belonged to a consultant, belonged to someone else. There was always someone I could go to to talk to if there was something tricky or difficult going on. And this was particularly the case with my subspecialty work. So for example, if I was prepping for an MDT as a registrar, I would go through my cases, I would do my notes, and then I'd go and go through my cases with the consultant and we'll go through them together. And even though he agreed with what I was saying, it just felt good to know that someone else had seen it, someone else had looked at it, and it just wasn't my decision alone. And I took that for granted. And when I became a consultant, suddenly it was my decision alone. And there was now a lot of anxiety surrounding those decisions. I had to, you know, I was always doubting, am I doing the right thing? There's a lot of like self-doubt came into play. I had tried to prep myself for consultant role before I started and I had tried to plug any knowledge gaps that I thought I had. I only had about two weeks between finishing my fellowship and starting my consultant job but also though I didn't think there was a lot that I didn't know and I guess it's a case of you don't know what you don't know until you realize that you don't know it. I don't know if more training or more time as a fellow would have helped. I think there were some things that I just wouldn't have been able to learn until I actually started doing the job as a consultant. In retrospect, in my opinion, it's a rite of passage. I think there will always be some trepidation associated with making the leap from being a registrar to being a consultant. 
Um, I have a video coming up that where I'll be discussing how to navigate that transition and the, give me some tips about how to make that better. So if you're interested in that, then please consider subscribing to the channel and look out for that video. I haven't been able to do a day in the life video yet because I've just been settling in and now I'm on maternity leave. So hopefully once I go back to work, I will try and film one and share that with you guys. Overall, it's been a very exciting experience for me. I've definitely learned a lot in my first year and I did know that I would learn a lot because someone told me that the most that you probably learn is at your first year as a consultant. And that's definitely true. I'm happy with where I've ended up. I've got amazing colleagues and I've I've been lucky to be in a great department. That's it for this video guys. I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions then please leave them in the comments box below. I've also got videos coming up about how to prepare for your consultant job and also how to navigate the first year as a consultant. So if you're interested in that then again consider subscribing to this channel. If you've liked this video then please leave a like and thumbs up for me down below. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!